going to be my presentation, you know, we call it semester editor, go answer to any of you Aggies to get a better understanding of what we have going on here behind closed doors. To start off, the research question, right? What happens to young and new Aggie football players when I support their transition to the culture of our team, to the relatability, and seeking to understand them as individuals? Now, I came up with this research question because this is something that I constantly am talking about with friends and other coaches just to see what they have going on and how are they having success in the profession that I want to get myself into. You know, there's a lot of different things, a lot of theories and stuff that come into this. You know, we're just being the, the regular old person. You know, one of the things is the critical social cultural theory, right? So you've got this finally opening up for us. Right, so one of the questions I had over here is why players do the uh, why players do the things they do under certain coaching staff. What that is basically talking about is saying I have players hitting me up or texting me and asking me questions about things that are going on instead of texting the position coach. But I'm just the GA, right? And then across from that is accepting different power structures within the program. All that's telling you is basically having respect for the people that are in a position of power, of people that are in a, a position ahead of you. For me being a GA, that would be the assistant coach, and an assistant coach would be the coordinator, the coordinator would be the head coach. So it's just, you know, having a respect for them. You know, and then the next thing you got is response and reaction time to other coaches. That kind of ties into the first one, you know, the players seem to respond back to the people that they trust a lot more. If I text them or if I call them, I'll get an answer or I'll get a text back a lot faster than the most of the position coaches will because they have a, a better relationship amongst each other. You know, the second one across from that would be being able to navigate through cultural settings and learning and thinking in a certain cultural environment, right? That's, fix, that's basically talking about molding your mind into things that we have going on here. You know, trying to change leading from a junior college or from a high school and bringing you to a Division One program and understanding how things are going to be done here. It's not like where you were at before because where you're at before, you're able to do whatever you want. It's not how things are getting done here. It's not how things get done anywhere at this level if you want to make it to the next level, right? So the other two, you can kind of read on them. You know, they're very self-explanatory. I'm going to give you a sec. But this critical social cultural theory, that is one thing that you need to look up if you want to become a phenomenal coach. I guarantee every big coach knows exactly what this is. Let's move on, right? Mentorship, right? This is one of the things that my whole theme of things is talking about, right? Mentorship, right? You see number one, relationship, critical, 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 critical in becoming one of the best coaches, right? Especially here, right? You gotta develop relationships because you got players coming from Texas, California, Arizona, all over the state, right? But they're leaving from home for the first time, so it's different. You gotta build a relationship with these guys and get an understanding of how they are and who they are so that they can take on your coaching and your teaching for their lifetime and throughout football, right? Mentor players to uh, keep up with their schoolwork. It's very important that we stay on top of that, right? We do a thing where we have them go into the study hall and we meet with them, we have them meet with different uh, tutors, get set up for them. We check in on their classes on a weekly basis to make sure that they're on the right track to graduate and finish their classes. It's not all about football all the time, right? So you gotta sometimes you gotta always be on them about life things and how important schooling is because this is what's gonna project you into having the type of life that you wanna have. Your body is not gonna be able to play football forever, right? And then, like you see at the bottom, right, it says talking and telling how it is. Sometimes you just gotta do that. You gotta be real with them. You don't gotta sugarcoat things, but I think the way you say things is, is uh, much more important. You know, tell them how it is. Tell them that they're not doing well. Tell them that they are doing well. Everybody likes to hear praise, but be honest with them. And if they're not doing well, give them an example as to what they can do to do better. Show them what they're doing wrong and then point them in the right direction. Don't just be negative to them and tell them, you know, you're doing bad and bashing on them, bashing on them, bashing on them, because that's not going to do anything for nobody. All right, you got to keep everybody in a positive mindset and smiling. You got to appreciate what you got going on here. If you're not wanting to truly be here, then what are you here for? Because then you're just wasting everybody's time, including your own. So here, we got COVID, right? And everybody's going through this. We've had a whole lot of things that our players and coaches have had to deal with. You know, this is just a list of them. Isolation, reduced practices. We didn't even have a season this year. Player safety, 
You know, we got to make sure that everybody is staying six feet apart, that they're not going out partying and stuff like that. Stay away from what you consider the common students because you're better off in a bubble with us because we're getting tested every week. We're monitoring your every move, but you're going out, if you're going out partying, then that's just showing that you don't really care about your own safety and your teammates' safety, or even your coaches, because your coaches got to go home with families and everything like that. You know, understanding the situation, we kind of have what you call a little powwow meeting as a coaching staff with our players, you know, to give them, a, and our, our AD ended up coming, to give them a, an understanding as to what's going on right here, the COVID stuff, you know, as to why we're not playing. You know, it's not because of our coaching staff. They're not the reason that we're not playing. It's really just because of everything going on. You don't want people to be sick. As you see, yeah, there's other schools that are playing, but we can't control that. We have the same amount of testing that they can do, but our governor also isn't helping us out and stuff, which is what it is. But the thing about the isolation is people are being put, you know, you test positive, you have 14 day quarantine, or you get traced, you got a quarantine as well. You know, being isolated, that's a lot on your mental state of mind. Everybody is so used to when you're an athlete doing stuff on a daily basis from morning to sundown. So, you know, trying to keep the mental on straight and try to move them in the correct direction. It's, it's, it's tough, but this COVID thing has affected a lot. And I think that's where, right now, developing a relationship with your players is very critical at this point in time in their lives. Right? So now we move on to, you know, developing the culture. You know, this is one of the things, this is a big thing and an issue that we have going on right now. We don't have a culture. We don't have the winning culture that we want. And in order to develop that, I think we've got to build relationships as a coaching staff. We've got to build relationships as players. And then we've got to build relationships from coaching staff to the players, as players to the coaches. You know, once we're able to do that and treat each other like a family, then we'll be able to get more out of people. And I don't say just to do it just because you're trying to get things out of somebody else, but I think that you need to do it to just help somebody. You know, if you want to fail as an adult to pass the knowledge and your experiences down to the younger generation so that they can grow up and not do the same things that you did, not make the same mistakes, and go down the correct path. You know, so in these pictures that you're looking at right now, these are just some of the examples of some of the people that I've been around and been able to help. You know, this is that, these two over here are a couple of our players from last season that I was running some drills with you know, pre-game and everything and kind of breaking things down and giving them little tips and tricks before the game. You know, as you see in this picture right here, it's my little brother's graduation, along with a, a, another friend of ours who's basically like a brother who also graduated, who's in a doctorate program at Western New Mexico right now. You know, always been a motivation to both of them and being able to help them grow up. And it's great to see that they're having success in their lives. And in this picture, you know, I have my brother, and Shamal Lomax, who played for us as well, and Vaughn Ferguson. You know, they're all graduated and they're all doing something with their degrees, you know, and they're all doing great for themselves away from football. Because it's not always about football, you know. So these are just some examples of the people that I've been able to impact. And there's others, but I've had a direct impact since I've been here. All right, <clears throat> let's move on to some of the information and stuff. The data sources that I use was, you know, examining the players and coaches in meetings and practice. So I got, obviously, a hands-on hands -on view as to what's going on on a daily basis in our meetings, how coaches are treating the players in the meetings, how our players are taking on the coaching that they're receiving, you know, and then talking to them outside of football. You know, it's, uh, it's obviously football, football, school, 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 but I just want to kind of get in their mental, see what they're doing, like how their family back home doing? How are they doing being away from their family? You know, how are things going in life? You know, just talk about that, see how they're doing. And then just looking at, you know, different coaches, like their notes that they have going on, what other notes I have going on, and just paying attention to different things and how people walk around. That's, the, that's your presence is everything. You know, so if you're just walking around here slumped over, you don't really care. You know, I'm, I'm learning that. So you can always learn the good and the bad, and either way, you're still learning in a, in a sense. So some of the findings of the things that I found, you know, players and coaches, they have motivation when they're working towards something. It's kind of a tough thing going on right now. Like, what are we really working towards with not having a season? So we kind of cut back on not practicing, cut back on their workouts. The school sent everybody home, you know, and then we got to every morning wake up and watch somebody else playing on TV and it's not us. It's hard. It's definitely a hard thing to deal with, but we got to be able to stay strong and watch and pay attention as to what's going on and help our players and keep ourselves sane. You know, and we got to be able to look at each other and be able to motivate each other and have respect enough to keep each other sane. Like, I don't have to be best friends with you. 
but I'm going to treat you with respect because we're working together and we're going towards the same goal. Stop with the individual goals and let's move on towards the team goals. You know, players want to be mentored. They do. And as do coaches. Everybody wants to be mentored. They always have somebody that they're looking up towards and who they want to be like and where they want to get their work from and how they want to get to that point eventually. So we got to, that's why I'm saying we got to do a better job of collaborating amongst each other and developing better relationships amongst each other and with our players to build a true culture here, to a winning culture, not just any culture, a winning culture to have success here and actually not just say it, but actually do it. And this is, all this research, you know, it took time throughout the semester to get through and blessed enough to be able to have the opportunity to do it with the job that I love and the career that I love and be more hands-on with it and kind of speak on the things that I see on a daily basis and how I do things. So I want to thank you guys and I appreciate